Now that we've established what a surcharge load is, we can dive more into the actual loading magnitude from the AASHTO specifications. So in AASHTO section 3.11, we find our earth pressure loads. And in section 3.11.6, we will find our surcharge load equation. The variable Ks depends on whether you're using active, passive, or at rest conditions, as you may remember from the previous lecture. Qs is the uniform surcharge loading applied above. And delta P is the uniform lateral pressure that is created by that surcharge load. The following sections of ASHTO have equations for various surcharge load scenarios, but we are interested in the surcharge load due, a, due to a vehicle, vehicular live load, so we will navigate to section 3.11.6.4. First, we need to even see if the surcharge load applies. The specifications here describe that it has to be within a distance equal to one half the wall height behind the back face of the wall. So, a surcharge load applies, for example, uh, if we have a 3 meter soil height and the vertical load is within 1.5 meters from the back of the anchor. And for example, a roadway needs to be 1.5 meters from a 3 meter deep anchor for that anchor to feel any of the surcharge loading as lateral pressure. Second. If the load qualifies, we have two options. We can follow the design loadings, which is either found in Article 3.6.1.2 or specified by the road owner, the heaviest vehicle that is going to be driving down that road. In this section, the Astro specifications give various design loadings from the axles of different vehicle types like I was discussing before, and, or the design truck I showed above. Or we can estimate the surcharge load with equation 3.11.6.4-1. Here we will discuss the approximate method. Remember the previous lecture on earth pressure? This method helps us find that equivalent height of soil to represent the surcharge live loading as an active earth pressure. So following the equation, the terms are simply our surcharge or our, our really that's our lateral pressure that is calculated by our earth pressure coefficient, the uh, unit weight of the soil, and the equivalent soil height that will read off some charts. So the, the equivalent soil height we can uh, find in table 3.11.6.4-1 and the same table, dash two. Notice that we should be using the table for retaining walls parallel to traffic because this is the correct orientation for our abutment. The table gives us an equivalent height of soil for the vehicular loading, excuse me, and then we can apply this in our, in our equation to calculate the lateral pressure per foot of retaining wall. And we'll also want to interpolate, interpolate between those values for abutment height uh, to get our equivalent heights. So for example, let's take our K as K active of 0 0.3, a soil density of 115 pounds per cubic foot, an equivalent height of 2.8 feet, a width of 10 feet, and a height of 10 feet. So we can first calculate our surcharge loading in pounds per square foot, then multiply by width, to get a pounds per linear foot value along the wall. Finally, multiplying by height, we get our total surcharge load on the abutment. And then I've converted this to kilonewtons to give you a better context of how it fits in with our other loadings. So you can see our equivalent soil block. Uh, that is uh, resulting in an equivalent lateral loading here of 97 PSF. And then we're taking that area load, uh, like we discussed a bit in the previous lectures, and that was a triangular distribution for, for uh, soil backfill, earth pressure, active earth pressure, and we can convert that to a, um, a line load and then a resultant uh, that we get here of 9.7 kips, or approximately 43 kilonewtons.